Hello everybody. I am Dr. Farhan Zameer, uh, adjoint faculty at Biotechnica. Here at Biotechnica, we try to bring in information specially related to biology so that our budding scientists can dwell upon and enhance their knowledge in their career fronts. For today's video, we are trying to look upon the top 10 free online available tools which a bioinformatician should know by default. Now, I urge this call to, to tell all the students that please make sure all this, the intention of this video is to teach you online tools which are available for free and make sure you try it out. Let us try to jump in into the video. which has been used for bioinformatics is the database itself. So we have the first tool which is bioinformatic databases. In bioinformatic databases, we are trying to understand the publicly available databases. Now in publicly available databases, you have four major types. The first type is NCBI. The second type is EMBL. The third type, the third type is DDBJ and the fourth type is SIB. Now please remember NCBI is a US database. Now NCBI stands for National Center for Biotechnology Information and EMBL is an European database and EMBL stands for European Molecular Biology Laboratory. DDBJ is a Japanese database and this stands for DNA Data Bank of Japan and the third, last one which is SIB, SIB stands for Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics. Now please remember the intention is to for the, to search the entire component, you require an information resource, a repository and this is where you can get a huge information on the gene, on the protein or any transcriptional factors, promoters, everything is there on these particular tools which have been mentioned. Let us try to look into the second tool. The second tool is to know about the literature. Now to dig the literature, what we call it as literature mining or data mining, there are three major tools. The first tool is the Google Scholar. Now, we know that for everything and anything, we refer the Google Auntie, but here again, we need to, even for the bioinformatic data, Google Scholar gives me a huge information. All scholarly articles which have been done, which have been performed through various scientists across the world is been published on Google Scholar and this is many a times has been available for free download. The second important database is from NCBI and this is called as PubMed. Now PubMed refers to publication medline. Now this is the world's largest database. Please remember it is the world's largest literature database and whatever information you require it is being deposited over there. So my serious request is for you people to go and do a literature survey on PubMed. The other third important database is your Science Direct. Now on Science Direct, certain publishers would have been put up their data. Examples of publishers could be from Springer, could be from Elsevier, okay, or it could be from Willey. All this information would have been deposited on the Science Direct and I would you know, ask you people to look into literature mining either in Google Scholar or PubMed or Science Direct. Let us try to understand the third tool. The to third tool is the tool which is used for sequence search and analysis. And for this, we use a fantastic tool which has been established from NCBI and the name of the tool is called as BLAST. Now, what is BLAST? BLAST refers to basic local alignment search tool. I repeat, BLAST refers to basic local alignment search tool and this is a tool which will help to match which will help to compare sequences and align sequences now 
if you are trying to work on something on pharmacogenomics you can take one healthy sequence and then other six sequence and you can actually align you can actually align onto them and the data could be interpreted using various types of scores okay gap values identities etc etc and trust me my dear friends you have various kinds of tools in blast example n blast p blast blast x T blast in all these are the various forms wherein you can take up nucleotide and nucleotide do a blast protein protein perform a blast so all these kinds of tools could be you know you, the, all these kind of sequences could be analyzed using blast let us try to look into the the fourth and very important uh, tool which is called as keg now keg is a Japanese database KEG is a Japanese database and this KEG stands for Katu Encyclopedia for Genes and Genomes. Now, this is the world's largest metabolic database and if you remember in your previous classes wherein you, wherein you would have studied a metabolic pathway, either an anabolite or a catabolite, so this substrate enzyme reactions, all these are being represented in a form of a pathway. Now for systems biology or to look into health informatics or if you're looking into chemi informatics, this keg gives a huge information on the pathway which actually is being mediated through a particular receptor or a particular target. So keg, I would urge you people to go and look into a keg database. Now, let us look into the fourth tool. The fourth tool is the Swiss target tool. Swiss target prediction tool. Now Swiss target prediction tool helps in analyzing a particular data wherein this data is either a protein or it could be a ligand molecule. Now if I have a ligand molecule this Swiss target prediction will help me in predicting what would be the most probable kind of a uh, you know, uh, binding towards a particular protein and it will give you whether it is an protease inhibitor or it is a promoter, all these are informations could be predicted using Swiss target prediction. Let us try to understand the next tool which is called as admit. Now, trust me my dear friends, for any kind of an analysis of a ligand molecule, if I want to predict uh, the druggability of a ligand molecule, so the first thing what I need to know is once I introduce this ligand molecule into a human being or into an animal, it has to, it has to have these five properties. The five property is referred as admit, wherein A stands for absorption, D stands for distribution, M stands for metabolism of that particular ligand, E stands for excretion of the ligand and T stands for toxicity. This means to say the ligand molecule has to show me ADME that is absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion and remember it should not show me any kind of toxicity. Only when this happens I can promote this particular ligand in my interest as and to the next level so that I can look for a, a potent drug. So this you can do it using a Swiss database which is called as Swiss ADME. Now let us look into the next very important tool which is the seventh tool which will talk about <coughs> the functional network analysis. Now when I know about a particular ligand molecule I need to also know what exactly would be my target. Now, for my target, if I take up a protein molecule or DNA or DNA, so under this condition, when I have a ligand molecule, so where exactly this ligand molecule will go and bind? Okay, so this kind of a, and what are the other proteins? It, so it is not always, you know, there is one protein and one ligand interaction. So there would be a multiple protein and multiple ligand interaction. And to understand this particular functional protein protein in a functional network we use a very important database which is called as string now string gives me an opportunity to understand the interaction between proteins so it will try to mimic all the proteins in your body and trying to have a beautiful network that how exactly catalase is you know um, associated with you know salt that is superoxide dismutase superoxide dismutase has been associated with you know cat 
cat1 or locks and cox all these kinds of multidisciplinary networks could be developed using string database so i urge you people to look into the functional network analysis using string database which is again available for free the next database is the protein data bank so this is called as pdb now in pdb it is a huge repository of proteins which were actually analyzed using nmr studies spectral studies x-ray diffraction studies these proteins which have been well characterized are been deposited in your protein data bank and for doing or for selecting any target pdb is the best online tool wherein we can do a lot of analysis based on the protein structure now the ninth tool is to actually design a ligand molecule now this is a chemi informatic tool and in chemi informatics i can actually draw a structure i can actually draw a structure and look into what are their predictability as a probable drug please remember i am not claiming for any kind of a drug but i am looking for its prediction as the most probable drug and this kind of an analysis could be done using a online tool which is called as chemi informatic mole inspiration now with this understanding we go on to the the final tool which is molecular docking now in molecular docking uh, uh, you have a free web based tool called as patch dock what's the tool called as it is called as patch dock now under patch dock you are trying to have a ligand molecule and you are also trying to have a target molecule and then you are trying to amalgamate you are then trying to see where exactly this particular target molecule can go and bind to a ligand molecule and this could be done using uh, a, a very uh, you know interesting tool which is called as molecular docking uh, using patch dock now with this we have come to an end of this particular video wherein we have try to summarize the top 10 tools which were actually necessary and a must for all biologists and bioinformaticians to learn and execute it friends thank you very much for joining in in biotechnica we make it a point that we are able to help you in the best possible ways so that we create the budding scientist of the future thank you very much